Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All right, go ahead and look over to Galatians, the, chapter, the, the third chapter. And we, we started out, we finished up last week, we were doing in chapter 2, and Paul writing and said, um, verse 19, for I through the law and dead to the law. That I might live unto God, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Chapter 3, J.B. Phillips' translation, O ye dear idiots of Galatia. Who hath bewitched you? I just, I, that's the only part I quote from J.B. Phillips because I just love to be able to say, oh, you dear idiots. Come on, guys. That's funny. You know that's funny. <laughs> Amen. I remember the first time I read that, I thought, yeah, he got it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you foolish, oh, foolish, foolish. King Jimmy always dresses stuff up. Sounds so poetic. It's kind of like cussing somebody else. And we're not cussing or telling somebody um, something in French. You know, like, femme la bouche. Yeah. Shut up. To a bet. Means you're an idiot. <laughs> That's stupid. Yeah? But it sounds better in French. <laughs> Femme la bouche. Shut up. We well, you know if you say shut up in English, it don't sound quite as poetic, does it? Old foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before who thy now remember, Paul is writing a letter to a church in Galatia, the region of Galatia. The church is at Galatia. So it's a region, it's not a city, it's a region. And um, um, northeast of Ephesus and, and, and back in that part of the country, Iconium. And, and uh, <clears throat> Judaizers have entered into the church, trying to bring people back under uh, ordinances of the law. Now, let me say this. The moral code of the law is still the moral code. It was the moral code of God before the law, during the law, and after the law. Yeah. Okay? The God who said in the law, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, that was so before the law. That was so during the law, and that was so after the law. But the ordinances and, and all the different things that were to bring you uh, to salvation in the law, you can't do, can't fulfill, and can't accomplish. You're incapable in, the, in your own ability to live a sinless life and meet the qualifications of the law. Okay? All right. So Paul, but Judaizers come in saying they had to be circumcised, they had to observe the ordinances, they had to do the sacrifices, they had to do all that stuff, and that, to be saved, that was bringing them back, you know, you, know you, you believe in Jesus, but you still have to do all this in order to be saved. Now, we believe, now this is where I, 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 this, I, I believe in grace, but we believe that our salvation is based in faith in Jesus Christ alone. Faith in his redemptive work, the confession of his lordship. However, I believe that my faith in Jesus Christ will cause me to have good works, the right work, good works of righteousness after I'm saved. And not simply allow to do whatever pleases my flesh because I'm under grace. I don't believe that. I believe that because I have faith in Christ and have faith in his redemptive work and the grace of God is working in me, my lifestyle will be an emulation of his. Amen. And a, and a representation of his. Um, this only what I learn of you, received you the Spirit by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish that having begun in the, um, having begun in the Spirit, you are now made perfect by the flesh? In other words, they're saying, yeah, you confess Jesus as Lord. Yeah, you've been, born, you've been born again, but now you've got to be circumcised to be saved. Now, so that's going back to the law. And Paul would not accept that. Having suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith are the children of Abraham. So, Abraham was before the law. Now, if you'll study the life of Abraham, even after his, his acts of faith, there was acts of obedience that pleased God and honored God. Therefore, you cannot say that because I'm under faith and I'm under grace, I don't have to do anything. I, I mean, some of the dumbest stuff I've heard under the guise of grace is just pure stupidity. 
I don't have to tithe. I don't have to give. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to submit. I don't have to obey. And if you go through the New Testament, all those things that person, this one person said and put in a blog on Facebook, you know, about how they were free from, they didn't have to tithe. They didn't have to give. They didn't have to go to church. They didn't have to submit. They didn't have to obey. All these, every one of those things are listed in the New Testament we're supposed to do. Amen. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves as the, uh, together. Obey them which have the rule over you. Submit to those. I mean, it just goes on. Everything they listed, the Bible tells us to do in the New Testament. They said because they were under grace, they didn't have to do it. Hogwash. The Bible says in Ephesians that we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Those good works don't get us saved, but they should be the fruit of our salvation. Amen. Uh, that's right. Hallelujah. Now, know you therefore that with your faith are the children, the children of Abraham, and the, scriptures, and, and the scripture, for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. In what? Not in, in Abraham or in the faith of Abraham or in the seed that follows after the faith of Abraham. It had to do with the faith of Abraham. Amen. So then, they which are of the faith are uh, be of faith, are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many are as of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not, and all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Now, if you're trying to get saved because you came and bought three turtle doves and two ram bullocks and sacrificed them to Jesus Christ, I mean, not Jesus Christ, but sacrificed them on the altar, and you're counting on that to get saved, that is a cursed thing. You can, it doesn't work. It's the old, that is law. If you think because you've been circumcised, you are now going to heaven, you're wasting on the work of the flesh. And Paul writes later in the same book, he says, For in Christ Jesus, neither being circumcised avails anything or uncircumcised, but faith which works by love. So doing the ordinances of the law does not save you. Amen. And Paul makes it clear why the law was given, and we'll get to that here in just a minute. But understand, there's a, there is a difference between works that save you, faith that saves you, and works that follow salvation. And you are still commanded to do things in your salvation. I find it interesting that even after Abraham had received and done things by faith, he offered up Isaac in obedience to God. God required him to offer his son. And he didn't even hesitate. So people say, well, God, don't, you know, go back to the, I, I remember I told somebody one time, they're actually the same person, that they don't have to give, they don't have to tithe, they don't have to obey. I, 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 I got in a discussion with them. I, I, I thought, people can't be that stupid. They just can't be. And, and I said, because they said, you don't do anything. You don't, you don't do anything. You don't do any works. You don't do any effort. You don't give any, any, nothing you do. You don't have to do anything after you can say because you're under grace. You can just live any way you want to live, do whatever you want to do, because you're under grace. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to give, because you're under grace. It doesn't matter. You're going to heaven. That's not the point. The point is that we want to please God. Do we want to honor God? I said, even Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, who had not sinned, were prohibited by a commandment from God not to eat of the truth of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you know what this bozo said? They don't have the Holy Ghost like we do. And that's when I really understood you can't fix stupid. <laughs> I mean, I had a revelation of you can't fix stupid like I never had before in my life. They didn't have the Holy Ghost like we did. God took his spirit, put it into, I'm just took it, and put it into that body, that, that body on the ground and became a speaking spirit or a living soul. And walked with God, was covered in the glory of God, didn't have any sin, didn't know anything about sin, only knew God. And they didn't have the Holy Ghost like we do. I mean, I got a sore on my head from scratching because I had to scratch for so long. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, Forrest Gump quotes started coming up. Stupid is, stupid does. They didn't have the whole. They walked up to heaven and walked around with God. God came down and walked with them in the cool of the day. And he told them not to eat the fruit of the tree. Let me tell you something. If Adam hadn't have failed, we wouldn't have had to have Jesus come. 
But he was walking in a place with God that we haven't even walked in, really. I mean, he, was not, he wasn't even limited by his flesh. He was walking in the glory of God. It wasn't until the light went out that he knew he was naked. At that point, him and Adam knew they were naked because the glory went out. Yeah. Didn't have the Holy Ghost like we do. They have hospitals for people like you. I'm serious. Anyway. Eat that, ba for as many are under the works of the law or under the curse, first written curses, everyone that continueth not and all the things which are written in the book of the law will do them. In other words, the law commands this. That if you can't keep it all, you're guilty of the whole thing. If you can't keep every last single ordinance, then you're guilty of the whole thing. Now, nobody could. I said nobody could. Amen. We got, we got, I think when the lights are out, we got a dark spot right here. I'm just, is it, just somebody could check that for me. Uh, the, the house lights, not the spotlights. I'm kind of looking at here seeing a lot of dark spots, so I don't, I don't want to keep doing that. I know I'm on t tape, but that's me. Oh, that's better. Thank you. Listen to this. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. In other words, no one was capable of fulfilling all the dictates and commands of the law to obtain righteousness. It was impossible in the fallen state to do it. And the law is not a faith. I'm sorry. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not a faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. In other words, you, if, you got, if you're going to live the law, you've got to do the whole law. If you're gonna, I mean, we, have a, we have a denomination in, in, in our country, uh, Seventh-day Adventist. And they are all about keeping the law of the Sabbath. They, keep, they don't eat pork. They can't. They got to go to church on Sunday. They, they're, all, they, they're all about keeping all those, 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 uh, those ordinances and laws. And that's the very thing. You can't go back and do that. You can't go back and do that and, and to, to obtain salvation. I can worship on Sunday. I can worship on Monday. I can worship on Tuesday. I can worship on Saturday. If you tell me I got to worship on Saturday in order to be saved, you put me under the, the, the law and, and, and the law of the Sabbath. Can't eat pork, you put me under the ordinances of eating. You've had, you've had Christians come on the past few years and try, and try to preach that you had to keep the Old Testament law so that you'd have a proper diet. You know how I have a proper diet? I sanctify this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think it doesn't harm, harm my body. I call, I'm healed and blessed in Jesus' name. And that doesn't mean I don't I go sit down and eat 14 pounds of food in one sitting. Amen. But it's got to be organically grown. No, it's got to be sanctified by faith. Hello. You gotta be free range chicken. I know what that means. You ever seen a chicken pick? It picks everything. It drops out one side, turns around, and puts it right back in. You know I'm telling the truth. Anybody ever grew up on the farm around farm knows I'm talking right. At least the other ones are growing in cages, everything drops out. Now that you're thoroughly grossed. All right. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Jesus took the curse of the law. Now, he didn't take the blessing. Now, not, now probably here he's referring more to the law as a whole, of the law, the curse of having to live under the law. Christ took it away from us, but also you can kind of go to the double side of that thing. You know, he took the curse out. We're under the blessings still. We still get all the blessings. Aren't you glad we still get the blessings? Okay. Why did Christ become a curse and hang on the tree? That the blessing of Abraham might come on who? The Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, Paul, in making reference to the law, of the old covenant and the way the believer lives in the new covenant makes a reference. He, he, he doesn't even really say a whole lot about grace. He's saying a lot about faith. But faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus is our redemption. And faith in Jesus brings that into our life. Not We cannot do 
all the requirements of the law and achieve in our lives what Jesus did in his death, burial, resurrection, and our faith in that work of redemption. Amen. We're required to believe and confess. He did the work. He did the work. Amen. Brethren, I speak after the manner of man, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannuls or adds thereto. Now to Abraham, verse 16, underline this words. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not to seeds as of many, that's plural, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now, the promise of Abraham was not to you. Now, now don't get, don't, don't, don't pull a muscle. Don't get your knickers in a twist if you're British. Okay? It was not, the promises were not to me and you. It was to Christ. Why? He's the only one who qualified to walk in the fullness of it. So God made a promise to Abraham and to his seed. And Paul writes, it says, and that seed is Christ. Somebody say glory. Well, what's so, what are you saying glory about that? Because it wasn't to me. Wait, 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 wait. We get in on it. We just can't mess it up for everybody. God made it between Jesus, the seed of Abraham, Jesus. The promise was made to him. Therefore, he walked in fullness. He fulfilled the law. Remember when he said on the cross, he said, it is finished. The plan of redemption was not finished. That's not what, it's, that's not what it was referring to. The Levitical law was finished. The veil in the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And thus signifying that the place of the Holy Ghost would no longer dwell in tents made by the hands of man. God moved out. Jesus said it is finished. That old covenant, or, or really the old Levitical law. Because God's covenant with Abraham is, is enforced through the seed of the new covenant. Amen. The promise, the promise of the covenant with Abraham is still enforced through the seed of the new covenant, Jesus Christ. But the Levitical law and just ordinance and commandments and cleansings and all these things was over. It was finished. No more would the high priest be offering sacrifices for the sins of the people. As a matter of fact, when they, when they sent Jesus to be crucified, that was, the last official, that was the last high priest that had an official act of offering a lamb before God. And it was the land which takes away the sin of the world. Amen. Glory to God. Can you shout hallelujah? Amen. And to his seed, not as seeds of many, but as one which is, uh, and to that seed which is Christ, this, uh, that I say, um, this covenant was confirmed before God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. In other words, the law was added 430 years after the promise. Let me put it like this. It was a stopgap measure. Are you here? The law was added because of man's sinfulness and messing things up. He had, God had to bring the law to keep stuff together until Jesus could get here. Until he could get the, the, the seed that could receive the promise. Hallelujah. For if the inheritance of the law, for if, in, if the inheritance be of the law, it's no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So just what I just told you. The, the law was given to hold things in check long enough to get the seed here so that the promise that was given could be manifest in the seed or to the seed or fulfilled to the seed. Why is that so important? Because the way we get in is through the seed. And the seed is the heir of the promise. That all nations, in thee and thy seed, all nations shall be blessed. Amen. All, all eth ethnics, all people will be blessed. What? In the seed of Abraham, who was to receive the promise that God gave to Abraham, that the seed 
will, you know, in yours, in you, and then, of course, your seed, will all nations be blessed. Jesus was the recipient of the promise God made to Abraham. The law came to hold things in check till the seed could get here and get it. And remember, the Bible says of Jesus, when the fullness of time came, he came. He, there was a time that there had to be the fullness of time for the seed to come, and there were things messing it up, so God gave the law. You bunch of bone. You, you just kind of think sometimes God thinks you bunch of boneheads. God walks in love. Yeah, he's going to wipe out the whole bunch. Remember, Moses had to go out there and, say, and intercede for him. Yeah. Will not the God of heaven do right? Repent for the evil you thought to do to your people. You better be thanking God. The great God, Moses, went out and interceded. Yeah. Now, one much later than that, he got, Moses went out and said, wipe them out. A couple times I'm glad Moses and God weren't on the same page. Amen. He's ready to, he, he got mad when he was ready to wipe the whole bunch out. Hallelujah. Wherefore then serveth the law was added because of transgression, so the seed should come of whom the promise was made. It was ordained of angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then, listen, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily the righteousness could have been by the law. But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up until the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now, stop there. The law was given to show you you couldn't do it. Amen. You could not. Now, the Bible says if you're, going to, if you're going to become righteous before God, here's what you got to do. And then nobody can do it. Some people fell three lines down. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever it was, three lines into it. I mean, they've already had a bad thought. They're in trouble. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I, I find this interesting. Everybody talks about Jesus coming, you know, and being, you know, Jesus' grace, that kind of stuff. You know, people say stuff that you just can't even find in the Bible sometimes. You know? And, but it sounds good. It's got, it's, it's got catchy. It makes good sermon titles. And people buy books and tapes because it sounds catchy. And then it's not even a, it's not even a biblical premise. But I find it interesting that the very people who point to Jesus and his love, and he only loved people, is the same one who took the law, where the law said, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus came along and said, you've heard it said, thou shalt not commit, commit adultery. But I say to you, he that looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery in his own heart. He took it up. He took it up higher. He made the, he, made, he, said, he said, look, you, the, 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 the law says if you, if you do it, you committed adultery. I'm telling you, if you look on and think about it, you've done it. He didn't make it easier. He set the bar higher. Why? Because the new birth empowers you to live in a different realm. The, the new, re, new, new creation, regenerated man is empowered to live in a whole new plane altogether, as we said a few months ago. Amen. The life of God in us empowers us to live in a different realm higher. It doesn't, it's not an excuse to live lower. Grace is not an, a, a, a deep, I know this isn't the right word. I can't think of another word to say it. A, a, a depowerment. It is an empowerment. It doesn't relegate you to a lower status where you can just put up with and live in the flesh and get away with it. It empowers you to walk in another plane. Glory to God. I say glory to God. This is what Paul's talking about. We're not under the law. We're not going back to the law. There's something on the inside of us. Glory to God. Jesus calls us to get into another plane altogether. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you don't sin and you got kind of trying to figure out how not to. I'm telling you the life of God in you empowers you not to sin. Paul did say that if you yield your members as servants of unrighteousness, that's what you, you will obey. So don't, he goes on, so don't yield your members, but yield them as servants of righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. 
But after faith has come, we're no longer our schoolmaster. I'm sorry, uh, it was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. We, after faith has come, we're no longer under the schoolmaster, for you're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as put on, been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You've put on the anointed one and his anointing. So there is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, this ties back to verse 16, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. How? If you're Christ. This takes the pressure off of you doing all the law to get right with God. You're empowered by your relationship with the seed by faith to live the life that God demands. And then I know some people have said that 1 John 1, 9 does not apply to the church and they're just stupid or dishonest. One of the two. Just made it up. You can't walk through the house and God give you something that, no, that nobody in the era of church history ever before ever heard of and go out and teach it without, without getting some proof. Yeah. The Lord told me. I, I remember when, uh, years ago when we first came to Greensboro, um, we didn't have a podium. Not a good one. And um, I started talking to some guys in church and one of the guys in church said, yeah, I can build it. And they built this beautiful podium. At the top was walnut. And it was, it, was, it, was kind of a, it was kind of more of like a liturgical. It was, it was wide, had, had flat here, and then the middle went up and had the, had the, you know, the slanted thing with the thing, and it was walnut, walnut. And on the front was the cross. It had a cross that was walnut. Another was kind of a light wood. And, but I told him, I said, no, I want to, let's stain it in it like a special walnut, the whole thing. Do it in a, in a satin finish. Okay? All one time. It would just be come in the next Sunday morning. It's shellacked. Double, triple high gloss. The walnut is, is, is dark and the rest of it's light, trimmed and dark. And they go, I was going to do it. The Lord told me to do it this way. I'm thinking, no, he didn't. The Lord did not tell you to do it exactly opposite of what I just told you to do. No, he didn't. Fruitcake. Just because you had a chill bump didn't mean it was God. Amen. I'm the pastor. I said do it one way. You don't just come back and go, God told me to do it this way. And it's com completely opposite. It was atrocious. We gave it away. Later when we got, we, when we got this, we just gave it away to somebody else who wanted it. Because it was so ugly. And it, you, you would, it, I don't know how long it would take to have gotten all that shellac off. That high gloss shellac. Now I think, no, I don't even know if Karen was here then. Were you in the other building? Okay. All right. Actually, we bought it over here. We bought it over to this building. We had it in this building to start with. Hard. I mean, sometimes the Brits had the right words for stuff. It was just horrid. Just saying. How, how come you got off on that? I don't know how come I got off on that. Oh, commandments and ordinances and laws. Crazy stuff. Just crazy. <clears throat> oh, first John 1 9 debt bludgers. No. Thank God that we're empowered to live by the grace of God above sin. That's that grace. That grace is an empowerment. The grace is not, a, it, and I don't use the word license because people go, oh, you just say, you're just saying that. The grace of God is not an excuse for living according to the flesh. The grace of God is an empowerment to live according to the spirit. But thank God if you do miss it. Now see, you've got bozos running around preaching, preaching sermons and everybody just jumping all over. That the church doesn't repent. If you sin, you do. I said, if you sin, you do. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
What's he doing? If we sin and miss the mark, even with the empowerment to live above it, if we yield and go back into the flesh, we can come back to him and say, forgive me, and his blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness, and his grace is, is, is reactivated and applied when we are empowered to overcome and live, live victorious. But people go around saying, you don't, we don't repent. You must have been smoking some wacky weed. Or eating some pot donuts. Or, or brownies. See, I don't even know what you put them in. That's a good thing, isn't it? If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. See, when we came into Christ Jesus, we became therefore recipients by proxy through Jesus Christ to the promises made to Abraham. I'll bless you coming in and bless you going out. I bless you, you know, I mean, you know, bless you uh, uh, with blessing, I'll bless you. And with multiplying, I'll multiply you. I think Wayman says, I'll surely increase you and increase you and uh, bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. Wayman says of Romans 4, 6, 10, I believe. We now have become recipients of the promise that God gave to the seed because we're in Christ. Therefore, by proxy, by association, by being in Christ, we now receive that. But we can't mess it up for everybody else. I can go out and mess up royally, but it doesn't mess up Dick's blessing. And Dick can mess up, and it doesn't mess up mine. Why? Because my access to it is through Jesus Christ, not through me directly. The blessing still flows to Christ. And whoever stays in contact and fellowship and reunion and flowing with him still stays in contact with it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. What do I do if I mess up? I repent and get right back into the flow. Amen. See, grace is a beautiful thing. It's just not a stupid thing. Why would anyone want to try to go back and live what you came out of when the price to get you out of it was so great? And he ever lives to make intercession for you. What's he praying? That you'll walk according to his will. You'll walk according to his plan. The eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. He's praying and interceding for you all the time. Somebody say Shanda. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.